Hi there, and welcome back. Today we continue looking at the qualifier, this time switching from the HSL mode to 3D. This has made a change to the selection area on the left-hand side, but the selection range and matte finesse remain the same. And the way that the 3D qualifier works is very similar to the HSL. To make a selection, you also have to click and drag across the hue that you want to select. But unlike the HSL, you don't have the option to tweak your selections after you've made them. And that's because the 3D qualifier runs off a very different algorithm. It uses far more complex calculations in order to ascertain what area of the image you actually want to select, even if those areas differ quite greatly in terms of hue. Thankfully, it's designed to be very easy to implement, and it often results in a much cleaner key than the HSL. So I'm going to undo what I've just done and start from scratch. I don't want the selection to be on the only node that I have available, because then my output will be restricted to just the image of the sky. So I'm going to Alt-S to make a new serial node. You can think of a serial node as just the most basic kind of node. It takes all of the RGB information traveling from the preceding node, which we'll refer to as our backplate, and outputs the RGB data in full. Now we can start making selections inside of this node, knowing that we will see a full image at the end of the process. So I'm going to go back into 3D mode and use my blue inclusion line to select the sky range. And I'm going to make sure I move around and grab as many of the different values inside of this. Da Vinci recommends that you draw as few lines as possible during this process. Otherwise, your selection might end up being a bit harsh and jagged. So right now, this constitutes just one line. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to click on the qualifier icon in the top left corner. And that's giving me an output. And even though, yes, we have some pretty serious selection issues at the top here, you can see that the sky and the clouds are both being picked up really well, considering how different they are in luminance. By default, my selector is now in addition mode, so I can click and drag and get some of these extra colors in. That's excellent. And just try to cover as much ground as possible with every click. Every single time I've made a new selection, it's been added to my swatch list at the bottom. In this swatch list, I can decide to activate or deactivate certain colors to see if they're affecting my selection. I've got an indication of whether the swatch is an addition or a subtraction for my selection. And at the very end, I have the ability to delete color samples that I'm not using. If I turn off my highlighter tool, I can reveal all of the lines that I've drawn. And I can go back down to the qualifier and choose whether I want to show these paths or not. Next to that, I have the option to specify on what basis the selection is made. So YUV, which some people will know as the YCBCR color range, or HSL, Hue Saturation Luminance. And next to that, we have the ability to indicate the softness factor of these selections. So I can turn my qualifier back on and show what happens when I change this value. And lastly, I've got the big reset arrow next to that. The 3D qualifier was particularly designed to work well with chroma keying, green or blue screen, so much so that it even has an inbuilt despill option. I've noticed that after all of these selections, I'm starting to affect some parts of the image that are definitely not the sky. I'm going to click on the negative selection range, or even faster, I can hold the Alt button and click and drag in that area to create the red reduction line. And now my swatch indicates that I want to remove that area. The last thing I would do with this is go back to the highlight mode and play around with the matte finesse to clean this image up as much as possible. You can see that the selection is by no means perfect, but that's because things like qualifiers and HSL curves are not really designed to be used on their own. They need to be combined with something like the window palette so you can isolate exactly what parts of the image you want to include. So as these tutorials go on, I'll be relying on various combinations of methods to achieve the cleanest selection. So now that the selection is finished, I can turn this node on and off to show you that it's made no impact on the image whatsoever. But with the selection made, I can now use the other grading tools to achieve a certain look. So in this case, I can up the saturation inside of my color wheels to emphasize the blue of the sky, and then maybe use the curves to try to give the sky a more distinct shade of blue color. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.